Uh, let's go through the papers. Uh, joining us this morning, author and academic Joanna Williams and our very own business and economics editor, Liam Halligan. Good to see you both this morning. Uh, Liam, let's start with the Daily Mail, should we? Looking at the, the mini-budget, and it's not Which mini at all. Mini. Nothing mini about Kwasi Kwarteng's fiscal statement. It's, uh, they're calling it a mini-budget, of course, because a fiscal event... Because if it was a real budget, then the Office for Budget Responsibility would be putting out pesky forecasts oh, and see. growth assumptions and revenue projections, which may slightly queer the message the government's trying to put out today. The message it's trying to put out, and it is loud and clear, and it has been since Liz Truss started to campaign for the Tory leadership coming into Downing Street, is biggest tax cuts for 30 years. We are going to see today... Uh, a reversal of that national insurance increase. The government unusually announced that last night. We're going to see uh, a reversal of Rishi Sunak's legislated intention to increase corporation tax from 19 to 25%. It will stay at 19. A lot of small businesses will be cock a hoop about that. That eases their cash flow. We may well see an income tax cut. We may well see an. Uh, uh, some kind of stamp duty. stamp duty help, maybe an increase in that nil rate threshold for first-time buyers to help youngsters get on the property ladder. I could not agree with you more. Overall, it's a £30 billion package of tax cuts. That will be popular with lots of the public, but it won't go down well with the sometimes snooty economics policy-making establishment. A lot of people I know extremely well. They will Do say, we really care what they think? They will say it's... <laughs> well, they, they have... A, fed they, up with them. They have a point. They have a point. They have a point. Because they will say to lower taxes, to lower tax rates when you're borrowing a lot more money, and they are borrowing a lot more money for this energy price cap. <clears throat> a big part of today's announcement will be detailing that energy price cap for households, the £2,500 a year cap. You're seeing sterling getting slightly weaker. You're seeing government borrowing costs going up, maybe because we are borrowing a lot. Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng, <coughs> they're taking a big gamble on growth. If they can get growth going, build the pie, you'll get the tax revenues anyway, and everyone will forgive them. Am I being dim? Here. Never, Stephen. No, I could well, I could well be. Because obviously the, the government is pushing this as an agenda. The Labour Party, we imagine, are going to oppose it, right? When we, when, when we were 2008, we decided, and, and 10, when, when the Tories got in the coalition government, um, there was, um, you know, they, they, the, the government said, we're going to pull back on spending. We're going to, the word escapes me now. Austerity. Austerity. There you go. So there was, an, there was all the austerity. And the Labour Party said at the time, no, we need to spend our way out of this. Mm. Have they just completely swapped sides? To some extent, politics has been upended. On the other hand, interest rates are much lower now than they previously were. On the other hand, the whole world has been spending a huge amount of money because of the massive multi-billion dollar, pound, yen, rupee cost of lockdown on everybody else. It, keep protecting your currency, stopping sort of national bankruptcy, making sure financial markets keep lending to you. It's a bit, of a bit of an ugly contest, Stephen. You don't want to be the ugliest baby in the room. You don't want to be the country that looks the weakest. And we how, are... How ugly are we compared to the others? Oh, we know. And I'm a, we've got you here in the GB, I'm, GB I'm, News Court. Sadly, I'm not we're near enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, Look, our oh. debt levels are high, but they're not particularly high compared to other European countries. Mm. Sterling has weakened, as we heard earlier, but the whole... All major currencies in the world have weakened against the dollar. When you get geopolitical strife, the dollar becomes the safe haven. All institutional investors put lots of money in the dollar to protect their wealth and the wealth of their clients. So it's not... Yes, sterling is weak against the dollar, but on a trade-weighted basis compared to all our other trading partners, it's not particularly weak. Look, this is definitely a gamble. There will be huge controversy about this mini, not-so-mini budget... But it does strike me that if she can get growth going, Liz Truss and indeed Quasi Quateng, then the currency markets will forgive us. Okay.